Yo, what is going on guys? It is Grip and Rip Sports Cards back here with another video for you guys today. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing why Topps is going to be making huge changes to retail sports cards this year in 2024. But before we get into that, thank you so much for joining me on this video today. Can we get a minimum of 100 likes on today's video? As that is the best way you can help me grow this channel is by hitting that like button to show your support for all the content that we make here on the channel on a daily basis. And speaking of growing the channel, we are doing a giveaway. We are giving away hobby packs of baseball cards once we hit 8,000 subscribers, all you have to do to enter is be publicly subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications for all the content you see on the channel, and last but certainly not least, leave a comment in the comment section on what you are looking for to the most this baseball season in 2024, and I will pick the winner once we hit 8,000 thousand subscribers so there is that and of course uh, channel memberships are available hit the join tab next to my name i'm going to be doing exclusive videos once a week on there probably starting next week um from discussion videos to blaster box openings when series one comes out um to ebay unboxing with my ebay pickups i'm gonna be doing it all over there so hope to see you guys there and shout out to all the channel members who are watching this video because I know there's a bunch of you watching, so shout out to you guys. So let's get into the topic at hand in this video. Retail sports cards. Very interesting conversation every time I decide to talk about them. Because here's the thing with retail, okay? Here's what intrigues me the most about retail sports cards is because they change on a constant basis really kind of like month by month you know one set for example you know, we'll may i will name 2023 tops chrome right 2023 tops chrome can sell like absolute hotcakes and then another product like plain jane heritage high number doesn't sell diddly squat, right? So it really just depends on the set that we're talking about. But I believe, and I think I may have found the secret to Topps plan this year. It's very interesting because this idea literally just sprung up in my head out of nowhere. I was, uh, I was sitting there thinking about how we're 14 days away from Series 1. You know, we're literally two weeks away to the day from Series 1 coming out. So very excited for that. Um, just trying to hold my anticipation, in, really. Because, um, you know, I have nothing new to open. You guys have probably have nothing new to open. There really hasn't been much product. I mean, Stadium Club is out, but whoop de doo I mean, listen, I'll tell you one thing about Stadium Club. I'll tell you one thing about Stadium Club that I, I saw on the internet today. I saw some guy who opened a case of Hobby... The autograph names in his case were so bad, I genuinely feel bad for the dude for buying a case. Sure, they're on card, I understand, but man, and that's the reason I didn't buy a Stadium Club, right? The reason I didn't buy Stadium Club, well, for one, I think Topps raising the price $30 on their site was ridiculous. That should not have happened. And two, the autograph checklist is very bad. It is very, very bad. All your low-name tier rookies are in that product. And the autographs are probably seven to ten dollars max. Max it, with with a lot of those players. Now, sure, you get I think I've seen like one or maybe two good autos per case, but out of 24 autos you get in a case, which is 12 boxes. You're not getting your value back. I mean, I saw one guy get an Acuna auto, um, and that's probably the best I have seen pulled from the product. So that's why I really didn't buy a Stadium Club. I might pick up a Blaster Box just to see what it's about, but I did buy all my Pirates on eBay. 
Um, so I really don't have anything to worry about there because I got all the cards I really wanted to anyways. Um, but either way, Series 1, the next major release for Tops and Baseball cards. The, um, basically unofficial, official start to baseball. I mean, I believe spring training actually starts, I think, 11 days from today. So that's pretty cool. So spring training is actually going to start before, um, Series 1 comes out, which typically never happens. Um, so that's pretty cool there. But let's talk retail. So like I said, this thought literally just sprung up in my head. And I thought it was very good to get it going in your guys' head as well. Because I think Tops has a new philosophy. And I kind of talked about this in a past video, maybe like three weeks ago, maybe a month ago. So you guys know. The odds of Series 1 retail, compared to the Jumbo and Hobby, are a day-night difference. Now, when you watch my video, and I already recorded this fun fact, um, I recorded the best way to buy video, and I show a graph, and it's color-coded to what's good and what's bad. And man, once you see that graph, your eyes might literally pop out of your eye sockets with how significant... The difference is between Jumbo and Hobby compared to retail like Blasters, Hangers, and probably Fat Packs. I mean, I don't have the odds of Fat Packs on the graph, um, but I mean, they don't look that appealing to me. Um, but clearly, though, clearly Hangers are going to be bangers um, for Series 1, at least for Series 1. Now, we'll wait and see what happens with like Series 2 and update and things like that in the future, but time will tell there, obviously. Um, but I think I figured it out. I think I figured out the real reason. What if I told you, here's my thought process, right? What if I told you that tops may be changing their philosophy with how they put hits in parallels and product? What if I told you I am under the assumption and I firmly do believe that since you are guaranteed relics and autographs in hobby boxes that they don't put as many parallels in there because you're already getting guaranteed stuff. Now, let me explain by what I mean. Like I said with that video I'm going to put out in a couple weeks with the graph, I'll tell you right now, a little spoiler alert, Jumbo Hobby is actually, believe it or not, the worst way to buy Series 1. Believe it or not. Now, sure, you get three hits, really two, but we'll say three because that's what they advertise. I don't consider that manufacturer relic a hit at all unless there's an autograph on it. I think it's an actual waste of, of money to even produce those. So, Tops, if you're listening, produce other stuff. We don't want that cheap garbage in our product no more. Uh, that that just needs to go. That just absolutely needs to go in the future, right? Um, but either way, of course, you have three hits in a box, jumbo box, and two um, silver pack card or silver packs, which obviously is a hot commodity. Um, those should be pretty good. I think the silver packs will be pretty good. Um, hobby boxes, you get one relic, pretty much one relic or autograph and another silver pack as well. Um, but here's the thing, right? There are guarantees in hobby product and compared to retail, aside from like, you know, Easter parallels and, you know, yellow parallels and sometimes a blue parallel sprinkled on in there, right? You're not really guaranteed ever pretty much anything in retail. And I believe, I believe they are going to change retail sports cards with this philosophy. Because last year, and even 2022, we have seen, at least in my area... Now, let me give you a little uh, explanation on where I live. I live in a pretty small community. There's a couple Targets in my area, a couple Walmarts, uh, a Meijer, a couple minutes down the road, right? And cards in my area tend to not sell. Now, I know a lot of areas in, the, in, in America, like if you're in a New York City or you know, living in a big city in Texas or Florida, California, somewhere along those lines, I understand cards are going to be hard to come by in those big populated cities because obviously more people, less or less cards for everybody else because more competition, 
going to buy product, right? I understand that, right? But let's look at, for example, we'll use Plain Jane Heritage for an example because this is probably the best example I could give you for this explanation, right? Plain Jane Heritage is, quite frankly, Plain Jane. That is why I call it that, right? There's literally nothing going on ever in that product. And more times than not, you will find that product eight, nine months after the release with a clearance sticker on it, 50% off, right? And it just sits there, right? I believe they are going to start to do basically a system where if you're not guaranteed anything, I think you have a higher chance of parallels because... Let's, let's look at Series 1, this upcoming Series 1. Hobby and Jumbo, for parallels, is awful. A gold in Jumbo is 1 in every 9 packs, so you're guaranteed 1. And in Hobby, it's 1 in 32, which is 1 in every 2 boxes. So, essentially, you'd have to pay $200 if you, pull, if you buy 2 boxes, which are $100 a piece, right? $200 to get a freaking gold card which is the most common parallel out of the bunch that Top produces every year. That's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. And hanger boxes, you have to spend, if the product is $12, it's about $72 or so dollars to buy a hanger box or get a gold in a hanger box if you literally bought nine and, um, you know, that's what's what happened, right? I think I did my math wrong there. But either way, you understand. Um, hanger boxes are by far clearly superior with Series 1, right? So I think because you are guaranteed hits in the product, I think what they're going to start doing is taking parallels out of those said formats. So that way you have a reason and an explanation to buy retail. I firmly do believe that. I think that is exactly what they're going to do. Because like I said, there are a ton, a ton of different boxes you can find at Walmart, Target, or Meyer that don't really grab people's eyes. Now, of course, there are sets that do, like Bowman, obviously. Chrome, now that they have these buybacks in there. People buy these boxes like No Tomorrow with Chrome, right? You understand what I'm saying. But the majority of the time, like, for example, Heritage, Plain Jane, Plain Jane High Number, um, Stadium Club, I mean, I, that'll probably sit on retail shelves as well. What other procs came out? Um, another one that sat last year was Series 1 last year. That was just god-awful. Update last year, 2023 update, god-awful checklist. That sat in my area. It's still sitting in my area till this day. I mean, we can even go as far as saying Panini products, you know, or Bowman U, uh, Bowman U football and basketball. That proc just sits everywhere. Um, you know, draft picks for the NBA and NFL, that Panini product, that stuff just sits. We can even talk about Panini products in this discussion as well because the same thing really applies there. If it is not a Prism product for Panini, like NBA Prism or NFL Prism, it is going to sit Every single day until they decide to take it off the shelf or put a clearance sticker on that product. You get my drift, right? And it's very interesting because here's the thing. I said this plenty of times and I'll say it again. If the odds came out before pre-orders went live, which unfortunately they did not, I probably would have not bought a Jumbo Hobby Box, which I still believe I can cancel my order at any time. Between now and in a couple... They'll probably ship it before release day. So I don't know how long I have. But probably about 10 days or so, right? I could obviously do that. But at the same time, I want the hits. Which the autograph checklist, I will say in Series 1, is pretty freaking lengthy. I will say that. Um, if you are expecting to get a good rookie autograph in Series 1... Because the rookie checklist, I mean, the rookie checklist this year is pretty good. Uh, but here's the thing, right? Here's what tops don't tell you about these autograph checklists. They are going to put Series 2 rookies in the autograph checklist as well. And no, Yamamoto 
or Young Ho Lee or Yariel Rodriguez, the international rookies that are coming on in MLB this year, they are not in Series 1 autograph checklists. So no, you're not going to find any of those guys yet. So what really is there in Series 2 to look forward to in terms of rookie checklists? I could think of two people, Noel V. Marte and P. Crow Armstrong, who are not in Series 1 base checklist. I will say this, though. They are in... Um, they are in other checklists in the product. They are in, I believe, the 1989 insert, and they do have a silver pack card, I believe, as well. Um, but either way, to, to wrap this video up here, to wrap this video up here, um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens this year with with tops specific, uh, specifically um, with with retail sports cards. For example, last year, 2023 tops Chrome. Although it sold well, it didn't sell well on retail shelves because of the odds. It sold well because of the MVP buyback promotion, which I do believe they are bringing back this year as well, right? Um, so, I'm looking forward to this. We will know if this is true. If my claim and theory is true, we will know it. Probably, I would like to say... Although Series 2 does come out before Chrome, I don't think that's going to be a good indicator. I think the best indicator we are going to have, if this theory is true, we could look at Bowman this year. Because Bowman uh, retail is typically not really that good. Last year was very good, but I don't think that's going to be the case this year. I think last year they definitely learned not to do that again. I think sales for hobby product for Bowman last year plummeted. And retail went skyrocket because of what happened last year with how good autographs and you can find them very easily in retail, right? So I don't think that's going to be the case this year. The best indicator we are going to have for my theory is going to be Chrome. If Chrome retail turns out to be very good with parallels, I will tell you right now, the theory of hobby going away from parallels and more guaranteed autographs and stuff, that is going to be absolutely true. I don't know if the theory is... It, you, I can't confirm it yet. I cannot confirm this theory because this is only one product. Very small sample size. As you know, they release probably about 50 products a year, right? Most are hobby exclusive, but some are retail. We will find out. We will find out sooner rather than later if my theory is true. And if my theory is true, I'm going to tell you this. I'll tell you right now. Although... I could guarantee autographs and stuff in hobby. I might be sticking to retail in 2024 if this is the case, which time will tell. So that's all I got for you guys. That is all I got for you in this video. But before I do leave, of course, we have pack of the day. So let's get into it. So like I said, I'm pretty excited for Series 1. Um, you know, I mean, there's really not much... Um, in, in Allen and Ginter. I'm not the biggest Allen and Ginter guy. I mean, we literally pulled a freaking cheese card yesterday. I mean, it's terrible. Roger Clemens, that's pretty cool. Um, Say Suzuki, that's like the first decent rookie, I believe, I actually got in this box. Um, so, yeah, let's see what we got here. Um, we got Robin out. It's pretty cool. And we got, who is this? Jose Barrios. I forgot. I drew a blank for a minute. I literally drew a blank for a minute on who this was. But either way, mid-pack, I mean, the rookies, you know, although there's a ton of rookies in this checklist, there are, I have well, how many packs I have left? One, two, three. I have six packs left. So we have literally pulled, like, no good rookies, except that one rookie for the Rays that I ripped up, in case you guys didn't see that. We pulled a O'Neill Cruz Mini, which is pretty cool for my collection. And we pulled a Seiya Suzuki rookie card. So other than that, we have literally pulled no good rookies this entire box. So, yikes. And my hits. I mean, I did pull a Chipper Jones relic. So that was pretty cool, actually. So, guys, either way, I'm getting out of here. Let me know what you think about my theory. Do you think there's truth to it? Do you think there's not? I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.